Ah, welcome to Windows on the World. And this show is a kind of follow-up to our show Revolution, which we'll find in the archive. And I'm going to start off with a few quotes from a book that we quoted for in that very show. It's by James H. Billington, Fire in the Minds of Men, The Origins of the Revolutionary Faith. And the reason I'm quoting from this will become quite apparent as we go along. The social revolution so widely discussed in the 1840s, the forcible confiscation of the means of production, became, in Marx's analysis, the inevitable, necessary and culminating act of history. Very important to know this stuff. A few more quotes for you. Now, we're going to go to page 270. In October 1846, Engels defined the aim of the communists as support of the proletariat against the bourgeoisie through a violent democratic revolution. Remember what we said about the word revolution. It comes from the Latin revolutio, which means to turn back. And we went over all of this and the associated meanings of the revolutionary faith in the show called Revolution. Revolution is them, it is never you. That would end private property, it says, and establish a community of goods. Yes, the new communitarianism is merely an update of the communism from whence it actually came. So if we go now to two, page 271, we also find something very prescient. All religions up to now have been the expression of the historical developmental stages of individual peoples or masses of peoples. Communism, however, is the developmental stage which makes all existing religions superfluous and abolishes them. So, let's now get on with the show. When the Christian communists, where they were known as the League of the Just, were absorbed into the Marx Engels Communist League in 1847. The greatest weapon against the people had been sharpened for battle. The result was the Communist Manifesto, basically the adversaries taking control. That is metaphorical as well as historical fact. The same system still exists with a different cover story and is now the covert method, which is actually overt, but not to those who cannot see it. Those that cannot are the majority. Communism is actually 100% British, not representing the people of Britain, but the social engineers that engineer Britain, meaning those who use the title British are actually behind it. Marx, of course, being funded, um, well, Marx was basically the funded parasite of Frederick, Eng Frederick Engels, the German who had industrial interests in the cotton industry in Manchester, the Chartists being the UK communists supported by Engels and of course Engels being the business partner in the Manchester cotton mills, the elite factory owners being the front for the anti-elite front puppet system. It is only the definitions that change of course. The intellectual elite with money and time on their hands believe they are the instigators of social change but following the money is much more revealing. Words and definitions are, however, most important, and that's what this show is all about, and it's part of our series which will hopefully bring about an outbreak of thinking in people who are ready for it, and it will give them a springboard to look into more research and basically empower themselves in a proper way. So words and definitions are the most important aspect of this, and there is nothing much to it. The controllers were, of course, the financial crime cabal. In our show Revolution, we pointed out that Marx was an entitled parasite and was funded, indulged and used for a predetermined outcome. That's a very important point. Those in the West who spout this elite system as revolutionary ideology are disempowered and usefully deluded. They have once again fallen for a cover story. The academic world are now the hostages and agents of the global parasite. Promoting the destruction of spiritual power is one of the main goals of this system. This, of course, in favour of simplistic revolutionary terminology and a cover story which is always the real versus the stated goals, which we talk about a lot. This is the most popular deception of governance. 
putting communistic idealists into public office has worked very well in the UK for quite a long time. And we can go back to the 1940s to see this and the birth of the labour movement. But most recently, we're talking about the communitarian system, the new form of communism. It is and always was a British concept. It's a city of London financial project, Britain being the so-called elite social engineers. I'll give you an example. Susan Mishy, British professor who is member of the Communist Party, appointed as chair of the World Health Organization Advisory Group. The UCL professor will chair the WHO's technical advisory groups on behavioural insights and sciences for health. I mean, the titles for these jobs are so ridiculous. And you've, of course, got these things in your local council. That is where we see the most effective use of these titles. But behavioural insights and the steering groups, the whole thing that was so exposed during covid has become almost laughable. But all public office is inhabited by these useful parasites, of course. The recent Guide of Parliament and Candidates, this is for the MPs and Parliamentary Candidates on Conspiracy Theories, was put out by NGOs recently who are instructing the government. This is the whole point of the communitarian system. The government are merely the body which implements the policies of the global NGOs, global to local for policy control and it's so NGOs for policy control is one of the most dumbfounding and repetitive documents in recent history this particular one on conspiracy theories and how MPs should not be drawn into them well apart from of course we're talking about here every publication um, by the Institute of Strategic Dialogue and the other NGO steering groups every document they do is exactly the same has the same blame on the same culprits or perceived culprits and it's so transparent as to be almost comedic I'm actually on the mailing lists of these NGOs because they are so repetitively stupid you wonder how they can keep churning them out and saying the same thing but indeed they do and this document for candidates on conspiracy theories is one of the the most ridiculous things I think I've ever seen and that's saying something when we look at the output of the Institute of for Strategic Dialogue so Basically, the, the steering groups are responsible for making the subservient members of Parliament more subservient than could ever have been imagined. If ever there was a document which proves that the UK Parliament was fully immobilised, well, this is it. Its lobbyists are, I'll tell you who they are, the Community Security Trust. Ask yourself what that's got to do with government policy. The ironically named Global Network on Extremism. Of course, these organisations like Global Network on Extremism and Institute for Strategic Dialogue, they employ these university graduates who become experts on extremism, having never encountered it in their entire lives, of course. Well, more irony in this document comes from Full Fact, the Institute for Strategic Dialogue we've mentioned, and the absurdly named Tell Mama. I mean, that is one of the most insulting to the intelligence of all. And this last abomination came out of the even more insulting prevent strategy which has been totally discredited now the document itself which instructs these mps in how to think is a bottom feeders comedy gold propaganda of re repetition loads of repetition and merely reinforcement of the right of the entitled to be unchallenged along of course with openly absurd claims and its perceived manufactured threats they then list all the conspiracy theories they want to gatekeep, which are all from the same power structure. The most ridiculous aspect is a chart that posits that all of the sustainable development goals of the UN are defended by calling criticism of them anti-Semitic. That's the root of everything, by the way, in case you didn't know. In the past, this would have been surreal comedy, but not in a post-democratic, post-truth communitarian system. Things have reached the level of pure pantomime. The faux rebel MP, Andrew Bridgen, has put his name to this shutting down of all free speech. Now, there's been a bit of a news blackout on that in the truther community, hasn't there? So why are our MPs and such freedom fighters swearing an oath to this sinister and at the same time comedic hate propaganda? Because an oath indeed it is. Well, he and other spineless wretches have not been questioned about this, but why? Why are they not being questioned by this? Everyone should be questioning any MP that's put their name to this nonsense. And basically for the very reasons that we outline in these shows. The revolutionary theatre show, which distracts through all sources, 
like the BBC and other funded communist propaganda outlets, recently reported a call for stricter rules to stop UK MPs repeating conspiracy theories. And then, of course, this came out of Demos, who instruct the media on what sound bites they are going to use in their headlines and news stories. And we have to remember that Demos is a Marxist agitation group. And I remember, I've got a good memory for these things, that in their paper on conspiracy theories from 2010, they stated the new democracy will work with a combination of government open infiltration and citizens groups taking direct action. Well, that happened, didn't it? So government open infiltration is something that people of Britain would say that would only happen in a communist country. Well, news just in, you're in one. Citizens group taking direct action. That's the City of London projects such as Just Stop Oil and Extinction Rebellion. They came out of the police, undercover police um, groups called Democracy Village and Climate Camp Action. We've covered all this stuff. See our show, Truthers, Don't Get Fooled Again. They're all named in there and all the documents and the things that you need are in that show. And for this alone, we should remember never forgive, never forget when we are talking about these people who are supposedly there representing something that they call democracy. Well, this is from uh, 23rd of May and... It's written by Viona Harvey, the environment editor of the BBC. (laughs) Politicians should be subject to stricter rules on spreading disinformation or wild claims for which there is scant evidence, the think tank Demos has urged, after senior members of the UK government repeated conspiracy theories on 15-minute cities. Parliament's ethics and standards watchdog should urgently review its requirements to ensure ministers were truthful and accurate in their communications on contentious issues and avoid spreading disinformation that can polarise debate, the think tank said in a report on low traffic neighbourhoods. Well, if you want to know how to stop them, see how to oppose councils and LTNs. And you will get the information on what that is really about in case you wanted it. And the main point of this is to ignite some interest in this very subject. And the paper behind it all, and of course, our show Revolution, which underpins the whole ideology. Well, of course, they're talking about debate. Well, there is no debate in the House of Commons. It goes on and on. And we covered this for years, so I won't even go there. But that lame king's sword-carrying puppet and useful idiot Penny Mordaunt, leader of the House of Commons, applying UK government consent to this retarded rhetoric of what is called an advisory paper to MPs is an insult to any and all intelligence, urging all MPs to read the guide to conspiracy theories on Thursday. Miss Mordaunt said, such theories are a real threat, not just to democracy, but to the well-being of our constituents. She means this in the way that any information which goes against a dictatorship is undemocratic. But of course, most people won't actually accept that definition. Marx defined communism as the fulfilment of political democracy. Mordant is merely reiterating the same. The logical fallacies supporting the new radical nonsense was apparent. Actually, a really funny headline in the Jewish Chronicle with Stephen Pollard stating... Discussing conspiracy theories without mentioning Islam is like writing about Henry VIII without his wives. Well, this is actually revealing the whole purpose of such propaganda. Not quite the dumbest ever headline, but a very revealing one. Well, actually, discussing Henry VIII's policies, say the act of supremacy and the dissolution of the monasteries, proves him wrong, even if his statement made sense in the first place. The dissolution of the monasteries and the act of supremacy had nothing whatsoever to do with any of his wives and is is a totally separate subject. We are, however, in the era of the especially retarded and the headlines reflect that. No one seems to have mentioned any of this paper, which effectively means you never had a country and you certainly are not getting anything back. It's all been taken. So when we hear the promoted mantra 
we want our country back. You have to ask what they actually mean. The solution is, as we've always said, local, and it requires local engagement. A disempowered population merely protests, and that is part of the revolutionary, ongoing, permanent revolution. So, this is the whole point about disempowerment. Repeat sound bites, therefore, just reiterate this. Of course, whose streets are streets? This is what democracy looks like. Yes, we've covered it all. So therefore, there is nothing to be taken back. Taking back power locally would be the real peasants' revolt, but unfortunately, what Tyler is long gone and he's never coming back. The masses fall for the stooges like Tommy Robinson, which, when looking at whose flag he openly represents, discredits everything he says. But, I mean, this is just a circus. How long have these stupid protests been going on? It's just it, beyond bread and circuses. It's just boredom now. None of the circus acts ever give solutions, and the solutions are indeed simple. Nothing else needs to be said, in fact, but the distractions carry on and on. The permanent revolution is an ongoing pantomime of memes. That's all it is. It's mimetic warfare. Everything is down to a soundbite, which seems to have become more powerful as it has become ever more retarded. So as things have got more dumbed down, this kind of use of these terms has become more powerful. And of course it would, because the more retarded people become, the more banal the sound bites have to be. And this has been a major success in recent years with the communitarian, technocratic, sustainable development scam. So, worth reiterating, and covered in our revolution show, was the first stage of communism, which is actually to take away monarchy. And we're going to get into that after a very short break. Ah, welcome back. I just wanted to mention something, actually, because I played you a tune there called Dervel Gadon, which is from the Heretics of London, the Smithfield Martyrs. And the Dervel Gadon story is linked... Oh, by the way, he was a Welsh warrior god, and there was an effigy of him in a Welsh churchyard. It's all covered in the film, the Heretics of London, the Smithfield Martyrs, and the strange story of Dervel Gadon and Friar John Forrest, who was burnt in Smithfield in 1538 for failing to go along with Henry VIII and the Oath of Supremacy, indeed opposing Henry at every turn. And 
Unfortunately, we've lost the actor who played Fry of John Forrest, a good friend Des Britton. He's no longer with us. So I'm going to do a bit of a tribute to Des over the next week or so. And I'm going to go into the story of Dervel Gadon and Fry of Forrest, one of the most fascinating stories which came out of the Reformation. So getting back to this, in our show Revolution, we talked about the first stage of communism, which is to take away monarchy. Of course, this is what happened in Russia with the Tsar. It happened in France. And when we look at, as particularly the French Revolution, it's very interesting as to how Marie Antoinette was compromised into the position in which she was put into. And if you read the true story of that and the real story of let them eat cake and all the rest of it, you will find out it is just propaganda, of course. But the monarchy in the UK has been destroyed also. They actually willingly participated in their own destruction, which has been uncomfortable to watch in that they proved themselves to be idiotic and spineless. Well, I'll, let me explain it. These numpties way back claimed descent from King David and the Magdalene bloodline, another flat out but very audacious and, you know, provable lies. Even the perceived power of kingship has been handed back to the controllers. Now, something about this that's very important is that Charles and his deceased mother especially have been 100% complicit in this, and Elizabeth was complicit in it since at least her coronation. And of course, um, we can look at the history of what happened throughout the 70s, the common market, etc. And everything that has been done over the past 20 years to undermine democratic process, i.e. by them declining to have any opposition to globalism whatsoever. And this alone destroys all meaning of a royal bloodline, of course, as a real dynastic, dynastic bloodline would have at least put up a fight, and they didn't. Well, Elizabeth was fully on board with the global parasite, and Charles is actually the end of the line. He knows it and has given even more away, and he complies with the new system 100%. Now, these people are not special. They are stupid, there is no doubt, but being stupid and spineless is unforgivable. So, if we look at the, the descendants... Harry and William have already proved their idiocy and laughable incompetence. Not even the downtrodden and disempowered public can make excuses for them. They have no excuse. Their actions are inexcusable. So this is harsh but true. And when we look at the downfall of the British monarchy, it's been done in stages like everything. But this is the new form of revolution. Therefore, when people say they want their country back... It is like all created memes. Whose streets are streets? Choose your side, the usual distraction... These phrases given to and repeated by those who are clueless. When a group cannot define what they actually want and require, they are already conquered. This is a very important point because if a group does not have a defined outcome and aim, then they are merely a steering process for something which has already been predetermined. Therefore, the distractions work with 100% effectiveness. This is how governance actually works. So, Uh, In the bigger picture, when a population forget about what they actually possess and its intrinsic value, the taking away of what they actually possess becomes easy because they're not looking at where they should be looking. Their eyes completely off the ball. They've taken things for granted. And he who sleeps on his rights has none, old Roman maxim. On the other hand, the population generally desire what they do not possess and in the meantime undervalue what they already possess. And this is how communitarianism has worked. Once something becomes habitually taken for granted, it becomes easier for it to be removed. This can be through the imposition of something which appears to support what they call the common good. And we've talked about that a lot over the years, so I won't go into it. It has to be done in the form of a benefit and to take away something troublesome. As we repeat the real versus stated goals quite often, I won't go into that one. Never has this been done, though, more obviously than now. Importantly, though, the fear of loss is usually much greater than the reality of the loss. And this is where most people are. If the fear is forgotten, often the perceived losses become just another distraction. And then they are not, in fact, lost at all. And this is how propaganda media works every day. Because the things that were in the papers yesterday are of no importance today. And the things that people get obsessed with once they've been attained are of no importance. So in other words, attaining things of no importance is a lifelong chain which needs to be broken to understand what one really possesses. So 
the most important things are taken away under the noses of those who are not paying proper attention. And that has been the conclusion reached by many of our shows. The most important things are taken away under the noses of those not paying proper attention. And our show Revolution covered how the word is always presented in a positive light through the media. And this is how the reality of the French Revolution and the Russian Revolution was hidden in plain sight. The idea, uh, this is another point I wanted to make, because this is the Outbreak of Thinking series, by the way. (laughs) And it's me who's had an outbreak of thinking. I'm I'm not suggesting you have one. The idea of attainment is a useful driver. Promising something which may be attained in the future is one of the best distraction principles in modern history. Well, just look at the Trump saga. Look at look at anything that's been presented by even the alternative. Well, the alternative media is not alternative anymore. It's just more media. But that's exactly how it works. It's all about a perceived benefit sometime in the future, which may or may not happen. And this is a very important protocol. It works on every level of information. The faux rebels who lead through belief in the re-establishment of an imaginary utopia. An utopia means nowhere. And this is where, of course, they lead you over and over again. So the real and important is undermined. The blindingly obvious can be hidden easily. When someone is taking, something is taken for granted, it can be undermined and taken away. When people talk of their rights, in inverted commas, what do they actually mean? When they say, we want our country back, what do they mean? What interest do they have in the matter? Being born on a controlled plantation and not knowing the basic principles of governance gives rise to such uninformed and dumb statements. Making a claim over something which was never yours is absurd. This is the reality which is most often repeated, however. The control of the means of production has gone under different names. Communism, capitalism, fascism. All these systems serve a controlling power. And of course, academia always covers this up and never mentions it. The arguments for and against these systems are irrelevant. The materialistic atheism has always been the best means of control in recent history. The destruction of the supernatural nature of reality was essential. The population simply disempowers itself, the most important weapon of the modern era. And especially over the past 15 to 20 years, this is the most important leftover of Marxism, which is why it is still useful today. It works perfectly against the disempowered non-believers. The view who do, the few and those who have a view and do understand this are really just left watching from the sidelines being ostracised by the majority who have fallen for it. Overt infiltration and a cover story which fits their disempowered worldview. The present is interesting mainly because, because it's about the destruction of reality. Not just the fabrication of history, but immediate reality. Waffling gatekeepers from the world of fake science and self-promoting conspiracy circus gurus. It doesn't really matter. With, they have no understanding of systems or solutions and they use the clever distraction. A recent one is, is great. It was actually promoted by people like David Icke um, that we live in a simulation. And this is used and taken up by those who want to have a get-out clause in their very unfocused waffling. In other words, if you've got no solutions and you have no focus and you have no predicted outcomes, then you can say we live in a a simulation. It's a cop-out. It's it's basically the same as saying, well, what can I do about anything? It's, uh, It's acquiescing from all responsibility in the present moment because in the present moment, you are not in a simulation. You are in reality. And what they do to get around that is they deny the nature of perceived reality and they mix it up with the reality which is unseen, which is of course there, but not immediately present in what you are dealing with on a day-to-day basis. And that's even Zen Buddhism, which I'm not a fan of, goes into that. They always say that, that you stay in the present and your actions are focused within the present moment. And this is the opposite of that. This is just like giving away your power. And when intelligence fails, this is the consequence. So it's a globalist concept and a great tool for obfuscation and hiding uncomfortable truths. Well, add to this the promotion of disempowering narcissism and selfism, and then you get willful acquiescence from all basic responsibility. And we can see that. That was the whole purpose of the growth of social media. When I look at this stuff from a distance now, I can see the same thing happening on a daily basis. And the people 
who I have left behind are in arrested development, not because I've moved on so rapidly, but because they've stayed in the same place by will and by acquiescence. And this is one of the major achievements of communitarianism. Arrested development is the goal. The blurring of all perceived norms is the destabilization technique of choice, really, in the present. So the post-truth world, in the post-truth world in which we live, a fact then becomes an opinion. And you will find this being reiterated at you when you present a known fact. It will now be classed as an opinion. Hence, when someone indoctrinated in this manner talks of their rights, it has literally no meaning. They've actually removed their own rights through ignorance and being absorbed into the collective. And something else that I'll reiterate here, which is useful, there have never been and can never be collective rights. All rights come from the rights of one person. When rights are announced on behalf of a collective, they are not rights. They are a steering process. And that, again, is the new system. The communitarian system is a steering process into what they call consensus. It doesn't mean everyone agreed. It, it means that they look they make it look as though everyone agreed. So the letting go of the important and the lack of focus on what is taken for granted means what may actually have been granted has been given away, yes, through willful ignorance. This is the best way to take away rights which are inalienable. You get the people to give them away. They are simply overlooked and taken away through lack of basic knowledge of reality. Reality meaning the system which is in operation. This is not based on opinion or belief. This is based on identifiable fact. It is about the easily identifiable drivers which lead to outcomes. Everything else is a distraction. So, in other words, you can say that it is indeed true that 99% of human activity is pointless when you actually look at it this way. And people want to get out of that by using all these excuses. And of course, as we've just mentioned, oh, it's all a simulation is a perfect one. Absolutely perfect for arrested development. It has to be simple, of course, and because it is simple, it can be overlooked and easily undermined. To request something back, one has to define what, if anything, was in one's possession in the first place. And this is where the meaning of trust actually comes in. When there is no definition of rights except by an external unelected authority, then, of course, there is nothing to be returned. So, in conclusion, choosing words carefully is paramount and always be very careful what you ask for because you are getting what you have been given. And I hope that explained a bit more of what we were talking about in our show on revolution. I'm going to be back with a tribute to Des Britton and the st strange and true story of Dervel Elgadon and Friar Forest over the next few days. We're starting to put stuff on YouTube again because Spreaker, it looks like, are shutting down everything. We can't actually have downloads on there anymore. I've explained this to you. You can go to Podbean, which is on the homepage at windowsontheworld.net, and I will be transferring our whole archive to Podbean. But as I've actually paid for a year on Spreaker, I resent the fact that I'm going to have to waste half of that money. So I'm going to get my money's worth out of Spreaker whilst directing people to Podbean. The link is on the homepage at Windows on the World. Podbean has been going a long time and seems to at least have some integrity, unlike this platform, which has screwed people over halfway through the year. And if you're not getting notifications about the Sunday shows, please do let me know. I've heard that of several people now. So it looks as though Spreaker are pulling the plug, as indeed we have discussed tonight and this goes into how governance actually works so hope you enjoyed that hope it was useful and i'll be back soon